Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be checking out, for the very first time ever on the channel, Alice in Chains, and this is their song called Wood. Gotta put the uh, question mark inflection on there. I believe at some point I've probably heard this artist on some hard rock playlist at the gym, but I'm definitely not super familiar with their work and I'm not sure I've heard this song. I definitely have not seen the music video. So for all intents and purposes, this is a first time reaction and analysis. So I will be pausing to talk primarily about the voice and the vocal technique as that's where my expertise lies. But of course you will get the first time reaction because this will be my first time ever seeing it. But guys, before we get into the video, I have to give a huge shout out to the sponsor for this video and that is DIYOJ. DIYOJ is a fantastic service and a website really that makes custom jerseys like the one I'm wearing. Because I'm in a musical group called The Bass Gang, I had this very custom jersey made with The Bass Gang on the front, The Bass Gang logo on one of the sleeves, and of course my last name, Barber, on the back with the number two because that's always the number I used to have when I played baseball. DIYOJ makes all kinds of customized jerseys. So you could be like me and get this customized baseball jersey. You can get a custom football jersey, hockey jersey. All kinds of jerseys are available for customization. If you guys are interested in getting a custom jersey for a discount, head over to www.diyoj.com and use coupon code PETER at checkout. That's DIYOJ.com and use code PETER at checkout. Get yourself a custom jersey, guys, and let's get into the video. Before we get into the singing, so we've got these, it's like these pretty heavy drums, but they're not going crazy yet, right? It's like pretty actually kind of laid back. We also get this, I love this bass guitar that comes in. And it's like, God, you can hear all the kind of extra action happening on the strings, right? It's not a super clean tone. And there's also a lot of space happening giving atmosphere to the sound. It doesn't it does not sound very studio. It sounds it sounds a lot more kind of raw in nature. And you've got a couple you got a couple electric guitars sitting higher, basically playing playing some pretty simple harmonies as we go through. So it's funny. I I kind I feel like I recognize the the vocal timbre, the vocal color of the second singer that comes in. That really distinct, ah, like that really like good vocal fold closure, very forward sound, bright, very bitey sound. Um, I feel like I recognize that singer. So maybe I've heard another Alice in Chains song with that singer kind of taking the lead. Maybe that is the lead singer, and they're just kind of switching it up in this video. I'm not really sure. But um, this first singer comes in, it's more, it's it's breathier, it's airier, it's a little more kind of mysterious, it's a little more pulled back and subdued. And then the second singer comes in, it's like a very clear tone, kind of right in your face. No So we're just up to a B flat three. So, you know, this is very much middle range, especially for most rock, 
hard rock singers, usually they can extend their range way up high and get into that kind of gritty belting. But right now we're getting actually a much more kind of, yeah, like intimate kind of whismical sound from this first singer. So that's just middle C for the second singer that comes in. The singer with the, we've got the long haired singer who's got this kind of breathy tone. Then we've got the singer with the slicked back hair that's got this much more kind of bitey forward tone. Yeah, there's something about that voice that I recognize. So I must have heard some Alice in Chains in passing with this this guy who maybe is in, uh, kind of the work indicative now, maybe is the lead singer of the group primarily. Um, very distinctive sound, distinctive vocal color. Let's uh, let's get into what he's doing here. So we are in B flat. So this is going to the five of the B flat. That's a high F, F4 for male voice. And um, really like, it's amazing. There's like, there's good vocal fold closure when there's not grit in the sound. When you put grit in the sound, inherently the vocal fold closure goes down a little bit because grit induces turbulence, it induces noise, and there's actually more air escaping out of the voice. It's a less efficient sound inherently. Um, but this singer has very good natural vocal fold closure, and you can even tell when there's grit there. It's like better, better, more efficient use of the grit than most singers you hear. Um, and as soon as the grit's gone, the voice comes back into a very pure tone. It's a really cool voice. <laughs> See, like before he goes up to the, before he jumps up to that high A flat, it's just a very efficient, bitey tone. And then he jumps up and there's all this grit and it's such an intense sound. And it actually maintains more efficiency than most voices you hear that sing with grit that high. And I love, I just love this, this belt on this high A flat is so sick. After. nice riffing on the way down ah, like a couple a couple riffs coming back down off that off that high flat also I'm really digging these outfits I was just wondering if this if this uh, if this guitarist back here was also wearing a jersey kind of like I'm wearing now just unbuttoned yeah that yeah it is a jersey hey more promo for <laughs> <laughs> DIY um, awesome awesome yeah another another jersey being repped being repped on screen at the moment very cool uh, I digress Yeah, I really like listening to his voice go back and forth between the gritty and the efficient singing, and you get it, you get it all. You know, over the course of a couple lines, you get you get the really gritty or kind of rock belting, and you get, you know, a much cleaner tone that just, because of this singer's vocal fold closure, has a really nice efficiency to it, but it has an edge to it. It still is really, it's cutting and biting, whether it's, whether it's gritty or not. Like that's all grit. So I made a big, and then mistake is all clean. Yeah, so 
think he got up to he actually got up to the high B flat there. So that's getting up really, really high for any kind of voice type in pure chest voice, any kind of male voice type. So high B flat, that's that's commendable. Just touched on it. Middle section here sounding a lot like the introduction to the song. Similar elements. Look at the just the hair in this group. I am jealous. I just buzzed all my hair off, and now I'm 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 jealous. I want this I want this long flowy hair. Look at that hair. That is unbelievable. If I could if I could grow my hair out like that, I absolutely would. I can't, unfortunately, until I get a hair transplant. So I'm going to get this guy's hair when I get the hair transplant down the road. Uh, very similar vocal approach to the first verse, right? We have we have this first singer in the in the skull cap. Uh, like mother, allowing air to come through the sound. It's a breathier sound. And then we have our lead singer coming in with that edge, and it's a cool it's a cool blend of voices because they're so different timbrely, like they have such different qualities to them. So it's cool to hear them singing together in harmony. So we got pretty, pretty, so second verse, very similar vocal approach. And going into this second chorus, uh, also very similar, but I feel like the singer is intentionally going to put just a, just a little bit more intensity into the sound just because it is the second chorus, right? You don't want to do something exactly the same, even if musically it's essentially the same material. Just, just ripping it on that high A flat. It's so good. Yeah, so that he gets a little bit longer on the B flat in the second chorus. In the first chorus, he really just, where he like just, just tapped on it. This one, you, we do get a just, just, just a, a hint of sustain there. Wondering when this song first came out, it feels like 90s, feels like 90s to me. And the video feels very much like 90s. Like I've done a few System of a Down, uh, System of a Down songs, which I'll leave up here. And um, the videos are very similar. It's like they, they're invoking feelings and you'll get like, I don't know, there was a clip a minute ago of just like a picture of dice and the dice is gone. And it just is like, disorienting and there's all these like clips of so many different kinds of things happening and there's like the black and white and some of the images are like rather disturbing maybe not so much in this video but a lot of these kinds of videos um so it, it, it very much it very much feels like it's part of that um you know catalog of of like 90s rock um so i think We'll see if that's when it came out. I don't actually know. Leave comments below if you know more about the video production, please. Always, always interested to learn more. Oh, I 
love that. It like crescendos into it on that high F. It starts like you can barely hear it and then grows into this chorus. Yeah. He's added a little bit more juice to that belt every time he's gotten to it. So the first chorus, it was how it was however it was, then he added a little bit of chutzpah on the second chorus and a little length, and on this third one he just sustained it far longer than the previous two choruses. So it's a great way to kind of rev up intensity and, and make sure the song climaxes at the right point, which is during the final chorus in most cases. <laughs> He's throwing his voice around. He's really letting it. He's letting it kind of break and crack, adding more grit to the sound. He also does a little riff where he goes a bit lower than he did the first time. I'll point this out. This next one. Steak. Steak. So down to an A flat. Three, I think he gets down to. I think I was an octave lower. Yeah. Just ripping it. So we go to C sharp major at the start of this bridge. This is not, I was not expecting these chords. This is a really cool change. So C sharp major. Mm -hmm. Tritone? Yeah, we go from C sharp and then down to G. So we get a tritone shift there. That's the devil's triad. They've been saying for centuries. <laughs> And you can, it feels, it's very, it's edgy. Whenever you hear a tritone, you're like, ooh, ready to listen to this. Yeah, crunch, crunch, crunch. Really cool. So this is this nice C-sharp major and tritone. Get all. end up on E flat. Um, so sick. This is such a cool song. I love that. <laughs> Instead of far, I think he sang together and he goes together. Far together. Just like, I don't know, that was, that was another thing singers would do in this time period is that kind of odd vowel modification and really change the sound of the words. Here. If you think like, oh, what's the group that sounds like that? Is it Pearl Jam, maybe? Just like funny approach to vowels and words on occasion. That's the end. I was. It felt like they were going to go back to uh, a, a final chorus, a kind of reboot. But hold up, I want to see what he actually want to see what he says here. If I would, could you? 
and just like full on. Uh, this was another thing actually. This time period of music was they would do the whole song, and then there'd be this little outro thing that's different from the rest of the song. I think I what did I just do for uh, Chop Suey? I think for System of a Down. I think has something like this, where they go through the whole song and then there's like this little tag at the end that's so different from everything we've heard before. So maybe this is another trend that I'm noticing in the music from this time period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edgy. All right, y'all, this is uh, my first kind of experience, full experience with Owls and Chains. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. That's my whole goal for the channel. Uh, check out the amazing jerseys from DIYOJ. 10% off with coupon Peter, www.diyoj.com. Go check them out. This jersey's amazing. I have to resist wearing it all the time because people are like, why are you wearing a base gang jersey? Everywhere. Like, because it's awesome. Um, go check that out. Guys, please do like and subscribe. That's really helpful. Leave a comment for the algorithm. Hit the bell. And if you have gained appreciation, if you have enjoyed this analysis, please do consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. It's the best possible way to support me as I continue making these videos for you and enhancing your learning and musical experience. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.